case of traumatic subluxation cataract with raised intraocular pressure. The patient reported to us with raised pressure. His pressure was controlled on medication and then preoperatively he was given mannitol. While doing capsular exercise in these cases, you should make sure that the band on the side of subluxation of the anterior capsule is not very small. Otherwise, this can lead to pea podding of your endocapsular ring or ECR. And also, when the ca capsular back centers after the ECR is there, the rexis will appear centered if you don't make that band smaller. While doing hydro dissection in such cases, my endeavor is actually to give very small short bursts to create hydro dissection and most of the times I try and deliver the soft nucleus into the anterior chamber. This, this takes care of doing many maneuvers within the capsular bag so as to not increase my subluxation and also lesser time is spent in the anterior chamber to remove this nucleus which is very soft in the iris plane. As you will see, I just use a 5 percent fecal emulsification on my machine and since this is a very soft cataract, it comes out. Another thing to make sure is while you are about to aspirate the last part of the cortex, do not floor the pedal because this might increase the jerkiness of sudden collapse of the chamber and cause more vitreous to come out. So, you should slow down before you do that. Another thing you notice is that before you withdraw your irrigating instrument, instill some viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, but not so much to increase the pressure, just to inflate the anterior chamber and the capsular bag. While removing the cortex, you have to be very careful. Do not go full vacuum because sometimes if there is a vitreous tag which can be pulled accidentally, so do a cautious pulling. You did notice that there was some vitreous being pulled as even I was trying to do a gentle aspiration. So, I, I instilled some viscoelastic in the bag, not in the anterior chamber, but within the bag to distend the bag and push back the vitreous. Now, the decision to put in an endocapsular ring can be depending on surgeon to surgeon. One thing to remember is never push the endocapsular ring straight into the bag. This can cause more subluxation of the bag rather than do a tangential rotational movements of the ring so as that the ring slowly passes from the area of least subluxation to the area of maximum subluxation. You will slowly notice that the ring is now going into the area of subluxation and pushing the capsular bag in place. Now, this pushes back whatever small little knuckle of vitreous was coming in the anterior chamber. Now, I use a Sinsky hook to engage the eyelet and go under the capsular axis and with the twist of the wrist, you release the endocapsular ring. Having done so, I proceed now to do my cortical removal. Here again, you need to be careful. Don't go an aggressive aspiration mode because there could be some vitreous still lying in the anterior chamber. And secondly, it's a good idea to do a side to side releasing, relaxing movements of the cortex from the capsular bag so as to reduce the pulling pressure on the area of subluxation. The bottle height in this area is slightly reduced and you will notice that the some part of the cortex is entangled behind the endocapsular ring which is resisting removal. So, I decide to take this part out after I have dialed the aisle in the back. Another interesting thing is that before you notice that I again withdraw even in spite of the fact that the capsular ring is inside, before I withdraw my instrument, I instill viscoelastic within the capsular bag. The alignment of the IOL is very important. You should try and align the IOL in the same parallel axis of maximum subluxation because this is something which will ensure further stabilization of the capsular bag. You will notice I use very minimal movements and try and implant the IOL with least amount of rotation within the capsular bag. And there, you can see that the capsular bag is loose due to the trauma. This patient also has glaucoma and I will avoid using triamcelone in these patients when I do vitrectomy later on. If you notice now the IOL is aligned exactly to the area of maximum subluxation so as to give extra back pressure and make sure that the bag stabilizes in the area of subluxation. I create another port in the area. Now I plan to actually instill some pilocarpine and do vitrectomy. 
before i do that i try and remove that part of the cortex which was stuck behind the endocapsular ring you will notice that this is done very carefully and gradually because if this is done aggressively you can cause more subluxation or movement of the capsular bag before i remove the irrigating instrument i ensure that all the placement of the lens haptics are in place and still some amount of viscoelastic as described earlier before i withdraw my irrigating instrument now and still some agent to reduce the pupillary size this will actually help me identify the area where the vitreous is coming into the interior chamber or probably be into the wound and also help stabilize my eye you have noticed that there is small amount of peaking in an area which is the area where there is some vitreous tag coming into the wound now i will ensure that this area is identified now since i am avoiding using tramsolone in this case but for other people where tramsolone can be used you can go ahead and use tramsolone diluted to identify and stain the vitreous tags here the small pupil size is giving me the peaking zone is giving me the location of vitreous tag coming out i slowly try and edge out the vitreous tag from the wound and there i can see that tag floating around into the interior chamber now i will use a vitrectomy cutter only in that area the sectorial vitrectomy will be done now the vitrectomy once it is done in that area you have to be very careful that your vitrectomy port should not be facing your iris because sometimes you can end up catching the capsular axis or even nick the pupillary border so first of all i inflate all my wounds hydrate them so that i don't want pressure fluctuations while i am doing my vitrectomy i want a tight interior chamber i don't want any iris prolapse while doing my vitrectomy which will actually precipitate sudden decompression of the interior chamber will precipitate vitreous coming into the interior chamber you notice i have made the globe adequately tight now a sectorial vitrectomy to be done with 23 gauge cutter only going in that area where i saw some amount of vitreous which was there now you will see i am very carefully pushing away the iris from there going behind the plane of the iris right in front of the capsular excess margin and the eye well i am cutting the vitreous tag which is actually protruding into the interior chamber having done so now i know that the pupil is absolutely round in case i could have used tramsolone it would have also identified the vitreous tag by staining it and there the case is over thank you <laughs>